Good morning from the Cusco train station. We are about to spend the next 10 hours on this luxury train as we travel from Cusco to Puno, which is the jumping off point for Lake Titicaca. Along the way, we are going to be enjoying a delicious three course meal. I almost choked on it. Learning how to make a traditional cocktail and soaking in the beautiful views of the Andes Mountains. At one point on this journey, we'll be passing above 14,000 feet, making this one of the highest rail journeys in the entire world. And of course, because this is the daily drop at the end of this video, I'll be showing you how you you can book this exact same train journey for free using miles and points. Let's go. We just learned that we are going to be one of eight passengers on this entire train today. We pretty much have the entire place all to ourselves. We didn't realize this when we booked it, but this is actually the first day that the train is running again since January because of the situation that's happening in Peru. So this is gonna be a very unique experience. It is exactly 7.50 in the morning and we are pulling out of Cusco. We're also passing by the Andean Explorer, which is the nicest train in all of South America. Unfortunately, that one is still shut down, but we will have to come back and ride it one day. This is awesome. The whole back of the train has all these windows and this open air, and we can just hang out here the whole time if we want to. <laughs> this is so fun. What a cool way to start the trip. I was expecting some beautiful views today, but at the start, this train literally just goes through the middle of Cusco. So we're just getting to observe local life in the city. All the best for you. Oh my gosh, potato chips. Fresh cracked pepper. We've officially left Cusco behind and we've ordered some breakfast. I've never had chips come with my breakfast before. Mm. I'm very happy about it. These are amazing. I got the vegetable sandwich. Nate got fried eggs. Mm. I really like it. Pepper's beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna give you a quick tour of our train because there are only eight of us on board. There are only two train cars that we have access to. So I'm gonna start with the first one and we'll make our way to the back. This is the main train car. Technically, these are where our seats are. So when we boarded, they assigned us this table, table numero tres, which is a four person table. I really appreciate how they did this. They spread out all of us amongst this whole car. So it feels really private. Like there's no one behind us. There's no one beside us. There's no one in front of us. And they gave us a four person table instead of a two-person table. So this is like your official seat for the duration of the train ride, but it's also the dining car. And of course, the views out the windows are just getting better and better. At the end of train car number one, we have the bathroom. So let me show you around. Welcome to El Baño. It is very big and clean. What more could you ask for? I love the beautiful marble vanity, toilet, branded soaps, and you can even enjoy the views from the bathroom. On to car number two. This is the bar car. We haven't gone to the bar yet because it's still a little early, but we plan to later. There are lots more seating options in here in case we want to switch it up from the dining car. And now for my favorite part of the whole train, the very back is the observation deck. This is where we've spent the most time so far. It feels amazing outside. I love all of the windows. The whole back is just open air, so you can just lean out, see the mountains and the river and the animals and the people. It's just been the best. This is one of my favorite train experiences we've ever had. <laughs> We're about three hours into the ride and we've just been served Pisco welcome drinks. The band's warming up. Cheers! This is so cool. The train literally just went straight down Main Street of that town. There's a soccer game going on and all these people were hanging out right on the tracks. As 
we came through, it's like we were parting the people, and then as soon as we left, they all gathered back on the train tracks again. And everybody was waving, and all the kids were saying, Hola! I wish we could have stopped and hung out for a little while. Yes. Whoa, we are currently at 4,390 meters of elevation. Whew, kind of just lost my breath coming up those steps. <laughs> this is the highest point on the whole train journey, and it's definitely the highest we've ever been on a train. Check out the snow, crazy. So we've just stopped for about 10 minutes in this cute little village. They have a market set up, and I think there's a church around here somewhere. These are the cutest things I've ever seen. They're so soft. I feel so bad, I don't need any of this stuff, but I like to look at it. Wow, how beautiful. You're very brave to do that with one arm on a moving train. <laughs> as soon as we got back on the train, our three-course lunch was already being served, and it includes a free glass of wine. Cheers. <gasps> Look at all those alpaca. Oh my gosh, there's like a thousand. Oh, I love them so much. My wine is from Chile. It is the Sauvignon Blanc. Nate got the Peruvian Chardonnay. I think I like the Chardonnay better. Also, check out this bread basket. We have brown bread, focaccia with cheese and tomato, white bread, butter, and this veggie infused olive oil. <sighs> so happy. All right, course number one is potato soup with Indian spices. Mmm. 10 out of 10. It's savory and then the spices just give it this little like oomph. Very creamy and satisfying. Wow. Muchas gracias. Oh my gosh, course number three is spring quinoto. It is quinoa with veggies and pesto, but look at this presentation. This might be fried cheese. Mm-hmm. Great touch. Get a little mushroom with some quinoa, with some pesto. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Tastes even better than it looks. <gasps> Whoa. Course number three, chocolate temptation. Once again, looks like a piece of art. I almost choked on it. It was slippery and it just shot all the through. Nothing like waking up from a nap to make a cocktail. This is what makes it fluffy. Una, dos. We just got a private lesson on how to make Peru's famous Pisco Sour cocktail because everyone else is asleep. Now the music is starting up. So in case you want to know how, it's three ounces of Pisco, which is their grand liqueur. Oh, it smells so good! Oh, yes. Spilled it everywhere. <laughs> one ounce of lime juice, one ounce of simple syrup, one ounce of egg whites. Shake it all up. Nice. I've never been very good at this. Una, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. A ver, five more. Una. There we go. And it becomes this beautiful cocktail. Cheers. So this is the first big town that we've reached since Cusco, and we are literally driving through the middle of the town's busiest market. Everyone's moving all their stuff out of the way to make room for the train. And then as soon as the train passes, they're just moving it all back exactly where it was. Some of the vendors aren't even moving their stuff out of the way, they're just putting it in the middle of the tracks and letting the train run over it. This has just been such a cool experience. I love this so much. Now 
honestly thought this train ride was about to be over. We were just hanging out in the back and all of a sudden there was an announcement that it was tea time. So not only do we have this delicious herbal tea, but a whole plate of food. We have some veggie sandwiches, cinnamon cake, mango cake, whatever this is. This train ride has vastly exceeded my expectations. And I have to just say something about the staff. Obviously the ratio of staff to passengers is ideal. They have just been so great, so sweet, and they all just seem genuinely happy to be here. Even the performers, it feels like they're just as excited as we are that this train is running again. So that just makes everything extra fun. We are about to pull into Puno. This train ride is going to be over. And honestly, this is something we weren't even planning on doing when we came to Peru. The only reason we ended up on this train, because all the flights got canceled between Cusco and Puno, and it was either this or ride a bus. But I am now so glad that that flight got canceled because this has been one of the best trains we've ever taken. It probably helps that we spent the last week peeing in the bushes <laughs> and eating protein bars, but it really was top notch. We've had the opportunity to ride trains all over the world, and I can confidently say that this is one of the top three most beautiful train rides we have ever been on. And it might be the most, I'm just trying to take into account recency bias. I knew it was gonna be beautiful. I knew we were gonna go through the mountains, but I was not expecting the amount of like local life we were gonna get to witness. Like the amount of farms and tiny villages with kids and dogs and so many animals. It was the perfect mix. The only thing that could have made this train ride better is if you could sleep on this train, which we kind of did, but <laughs> <laughs> it's not really designed to do that. Okay, before we head to Lake Titicaca and meet Luis and his family, let's talk about how you could book this train for free using miles and points. And you can use the same strategy to book trains all over the world. Unlike booking flights and hotels with miles and points, where we're usually focused on maximizing your points by transferring them to a specific partner, or you know, there's usually a lot of different options. When it comes to train travel, you really only have one and it's super simple. This strategy involves using Capital One miles to cover travel purchases. In case you're watching this and you don't have Capital One miles, we highly recommend the Capital One Venture X card and the Capital One Venture card over at the Daily Drop. Both of these cards will enable you to earn Capital One miles super fast. Also, if you're gonna sign up for one of these cards, we would really appreciate it if you use our links over on our top credit card page, which I will leave a link to in the description below. Using our links allows us to earn an affiliate commission from the banks, which ultimately allows us to pay the bills at Daily Drop and keep everything free for you. Okay, at this point, I'm going to assume that you've signed up for a Capital One card and you now have some Capital One miles in your account. Now, let me show you how to redeem them. So the first thing that you're gonna do, pretty straightforward, you're gonna use your Capital One card to pay for your travel purchase. In this case, it would be paying for your train tickets using whichever Capital One card you signed up for. Then you're going to log into your Capital One account and click View Rewards. From there, you'll choose the option that says Cover Travel Purchases. This is going to pull up a pop-up where you'll see a list of your recent travel purchases. Then you'll basically be able to use your miles at a rate of one mile covering one cent. So in this case, our train ride costs $550. So we would need 55,000 Capital One miles to completely cover that purchase. At that point, you're gonna receive an email from Capital One letting you know that a credit will be added to your account in two to three days that will completely cover the cost of your purchase. So basically that just means you're not gonna owe Capital One any money for those train tickets that you purchase. Okay, before I turn you loose to start covering your travel purchases using Capital One miles, there are two important things that you need to know. The first one is that Capital One miles can actually be used to erase any travel purchase. So it doesn't just have to be trains. It could be a cruise, car rental, taxi, travel agent, or maybe a flight deal found by your favorite travel service. <laughs> this can be a great way to reduce expenses on any trip, especially when whatever you're buying can't normally be booked with miles and points. The second thing, and this is a little bit of a caveat, but using Capital One miles to erase travel purchases is usually not the best way to maximize your points. You could definitely get more value out of your Capital One points by transferring them to a program like Aeroplan and then using them to book Japan Airlines the room from Japan back to the US just like we did a couple months ago. In that case, we got five to six cents worth of value per point. But I think the important thing to remember with miles and points is that there's no wrong way to use them. The best way to use your miles and points is 
whatever makes you happiest. So if you want a no fuss way to use your miles and points, erasing your travel purchases, using Capital One can be a very easy way to do that. You don't have to worry about learning transfer partners or any complicated things. I think this is actually a big reason the Capital One card is one of the most popular travel cards is because they make it so easy to use your points. Again, if you wanna sign up for one of the Capital One cards, there will be a link in the description below. Also, if you wanna watch our Late Titty Kaka video where we go stay with a local family, that video is gonna be up over on the Karen Nate channel. And if you haven't already, you should definitely sign up for the Daily Drop newsletter. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. We send out an email five days a week that will help you become a better traveler and save a ton of money on your next trip. Finally, I have uh, one more ask of you, and that is to hit the subscribe button. This channel is still really new. It's only been around for a couple months and every subscription really helps. Okay, I feel like I asked a lot of you at the end of the video. All the links will be in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got some value out of this and we will see you in the next one.